And good morning. You're listening to Thinking Out Loud, and in the studio with us today is Paul Marion. He is the Executive Director for Outreach at UMass Lowell. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. And uh, first I wanted to talk a little bit about what exactly does a uh, Director of Outreach do? I mean, uh, kind of sounds self-explanatory, but I think there's probably it's a lot more complicated than just outreach. So, so tell me what your office does. Sure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm the uh, sort of the gateway to the university for uh, people off campus, uh, both through uh, website and phone and also you know through my work. Uh, sometimes I've said it's a little bit like a Secretary of State function <laughs> where you know I represent the uh, administration, the university in its dealings you know with our partners, uh, not only in Lowell but in the whole region. I mean we're a regional university, so mm-hmm. um, I work with people in Lawrence and Haverhill and throughout the Merrimack Valley. Uh, and um, we have a, just a host of uh, uh, you know activities that are going on. I'm not directly in charge of every outreach program because mm-hmm. you know it be be too much. It, you know I'm right now a one person with a half time staff. Uh, so uh, I focus mostly on institutional partnerships uh, with some of the major organizations and public agencies that we deal with on a you know an ongoing basis, and then. We have an enormous amount of uh, outreach activity with uh, the schools and uh, health clinics and things like that that happen through departments and colleges themselves. So now uh, you're here to talk today about the uh, the second F. Bradford Morse Distinguished Lecture. Um, this is a lecture series that uh, is, is geared around peace and um, uh, the reconciliation and, and that sort of thing. Who was uh, F. Bradford Morse, and why does why does he have a distinguished lecture named after him? Okay, uh, in 2006, uh, there was a sort of harmonic convergence uh, with uh, Middlesex Community College and UMass Lowell, both uh, uh, taking on projects that were uh, recognizing the uh, the contribution and legacy of F. Bradford Morse. If you drive past uh, the Middlesex Community College main building and look across the street. You'll see that there are lettering there that says the uh, F. Bradford Morse Federal Building. Uh, that building was named for him in 2006. That was also the year of the first Morse lecture. Brad Morse uh, was a congressman from Lowell from a, a 1960 to 1972, but he's better known around the world as a humanitarian. Uh, you know, uh, he passed away now, but uh, he he was a major uh, figure at the United Nations. Uh, I think he's still the highest ranking American, uh, the American who's had the highest, you know, uh, position at the United Nations. Uh, he was the, uh, let me just read it here, was uh, director of the United Nations Development Program and Undersecretary for General for Political and General Assembly Affairs. And he was very involved in uh, uh, the efforts, uh, you know, to fight poverty, disease. Uh, he was involved in uh, environmental sustainability projects in India, uh, really a, a, you know, a fairly large figure on the, on the world scene. But he left working in Lowell in 1972, and people lost touch with him you know, to a certain extent. Uh, but he had uh, advocates in the city uh, you know, who uh, uh, contributed to these, uh, you know, these new recognitions. Senator Panjatakis was very uh, key in having the uh, Middlesex Community College building named uh, for, for Brad Morse. Now, this lecture series, um, well, this particular lecture, it's, it's going to take place on Monday at 7 p.m., correct, at that building, the F. Bradford right. Morse Federal Building on Merrimack Street. Right. And it's open to the public, correct? Right, open to the public. It's in the first floor. They call it the assembly room. Uh, and we th- uh, last time, we did, when we inaugurated the series, we did it at Cumnock Hall at the university. It's a UMass Lowell Middlesex partnership, so we, this was Middlesex's turn to uh, have the event on their campus. And uh, we're very excited to have Porig O'Malley from UMass Boston from the McCormick School. He's the, um, uh, jo- uh, it's a complicated title here, uh, the John Joseph Moakley Distinguished Professor for Peace and Reconciliation at the McCormick Graduate School at UMass Boston. And really, uh, uh, you know, someone who's recognized worldwide for uh, his work with peace and reconciliation. What's what's some of his history and his background, and what's some of the recent work he's done? Yeah, his talk is going to focus on his most recent work, which is called, which he calls the Iraq Project. Uh, so it's very relevant. Uh, he's been working with Tufts University and the Helsinki Institute to bring uh, various uh, leaders from the, all the political factions, tribal factions, you know, extra 
governmental factions in Iraq together to see if they could, uh, you know, arrive at some structure for moving forward with peaceful reconciliation. And he's building this work on the work that he and his, uh, you know, institute did uh, both uh, uh, in South Africa and and Northern Ireland. And the uh, the uh, the unique sort of uh, approach here, the method, is that um, he brings together people who have a record of solving seemingly intractable problems within their own societies. You know, for example, the apartheid issue in South Africa and then the troubles in Northern Ireland and brings these people together with with people who are in the process of dealing with their own issues now with the belief being people who have been through it Mm -hmm. are in a better position to help others work uh, through their own issues. Right. In other words, they have more credibility that, hey, you can get through some of this really intractable, these intractable differences between different different types of people in the same society. Right, so they've been bringing, you know, leaders from the, you know, Shiite, Sunni factions, you know, other, uh, you know, religious tribal groups in Iraq. Periodically, uh, they bring them to Finland, take them out of the country, meet in Helsinki, and uh, have been working toward a, uh, a kind of framework for how they would go forward, particularly anticipating the withdrawal of American troops and and what uh, change in climate that will cause uh, and, you know, to be prepared, you know, for a kind of peaceful transition. Now, Professor O'Malley actually, uh, from what I read, initiated a meeting in South Africa hosted by Nelson Mandela. So he really was in the thick of that, uh, yeah. that, that South Africa apartheid right. uh, breakdown. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you know, he knows all the players. And, and, you know, the first thing he did was, bring the South Africa, African people together uh, with the uh, participants who were trying to shape a, a reconciliation framework in Northern Ireland about a year before the Good Friday Agreement, which, which I think that was 1998 was the Good Friday Agreement. And uh, that was sort of the first test of this process. And now, you know, he's able to have both the South African participants and the Northern Ireland participants, you know, uh, you know, uh, bring their experience and knowledge to bear on this this current issue. Now, um, this uh, so this is a lecture again on Monday, November tenth, seven right. p.m. at mm-hmm. the Bradford Morse uh, F. Bradford Morse Federal Building on Merrimack Street. It's right. open to the public. Right. Everyone's invited. Are they are people encouraged to RSVP? Uh, yes, they can RSVP to me uh, by the end of the day, just so we have a sense of who's coming. There's, there's, uh, we can uh, seat about 100, 110 people, so uh, um, we still have some seats remaining, but not all that many. So if people are interested, they they should email me soon. Um, What's your email address? Uh, it's it's my name, Paul underscore Marion at uml dot edu, uh, the standard UML uh, email. They can also just Google me or something. Um, uh, the the program uh, also includes a panel discussion Uh, so Porig O'Malley will speak for about 45 minutes and then there will be a panel discussion with uh, Professor David Kalivas who teaches history and coordinates the global studies program at Middlesex Professor Ardeth Thunmung who is uh, in our political science department at UMass Lowell also the uh, advisor for the model UN program here and which, O'Malley. Is, which is produced for the high school students, model UN at the high school level here. Uh, b- both. We have a oh, we, have we, well, we have an international relations club that goes to model UN and model Arab League, and mm-hmm. they've won a ton of prizes. Cool. But then that group also does a high school model UN. That's great. Yeah, um, and and then uh, it will be moderated by uh, 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 assistant professor Art Holtzlag from our political science department, who's international relations uh, professor here, uh, and and they'll. Discuss and then I'll we'll have time for questions for the audience. So the whole program runs from about seven to nine, and and should be really fascinating and couldn't be more relevant. Well, especially given and and we have a few more minutes. I think um, uh, I think maybe we can can take a couple minutes to talk about what's been happening this week. It's some sure. big news right. um, for the most part. If you're at least if you're uh, on the uh, Obama Barack Obama train, pretty good week. Yeah. For, for potential change in direction right. in Iraq and Afghanistan, both as well. Yeah, very exciting. In fact, I was just reading in the paper this morning that, you know, since 
Tuesday, there's already been some movement in uh, in the uh, sort of Iraqi dynamic about people thinking what's really going to happen now. I mean, the withdrawal is going to start. They're going to have to take you it know. seriously, and they're going right. to have to start looking at taking taking up their own uh, weight in in fixing this problem. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the the other you know thing I just comment is uh, I was looking at the uh, the turnout and. Uh, I think nationally it was it was getting it was it was like 66 percent. I mean it was just extraordinary. I mean approaching 70 percent turnout, and I don't think there had been a general election uh, turnout, uh, you know, upwards of 60 percent since 1960. Right. So right. very very exciting, very encouraging. So now does that does that showcase for Obama a, a mandate to do the things that he said he was going to do? Do you think? Do you think that that calms any you know the opposition sort of saying we're going to throw a monkey wrench in everything no matter what you do, is that going to make them sort of sit down for a little while and let us try a different approach? No, I, I you know, I think it, the the vote was an endorsement of his policies. And uh, in fact, you know, also in the paper this morning, there was a, you know, kind of a, a, a quickie poll that was done. And um, the numbers were way up, you know, in the 70 percent, you know, of people, you know, who are uh, sort of saying, you know, the Obama uh, agenda, you know, should go forward, and they were hopeful, and they were encouraged, so, you know, I think there's, you know, uh, they used to, you know, talk about an era of good feeling, I mean, I, th I think we're going to have some of that, uh, you know, there's, there's just a, a sense of a fresh start. Mm. Uh, what I found w fascinating was the, the idea that, you know, we have been very, very denigrated around the world for the last few years, that we've had, we have a very negative image, not just in the Arab world, but even in Europe and Asia and other places, there are very few countries that have a, a, a majority of people who approve of the United States right now. And one of the things I found really fascinating, that something that's a really, uh, really good thing about democracy is an overwhelming result like this for the opposition, for Obama, for ha his message, I think is really going to do a lot just immediately to ease some of the, um, the dismay that people have had about the United States and its role in the world. Yeah, I, I I think there's a lot of excitement o overseas that you know was building you know way before the election that you know they, you know the world was urging America to elect Obama. Now sometimes that can backfire because people say well they're not going to tell us what to do. But right. in this case, you know it, I I think the psychology you know in this country was in sync with the you know the mindset uh, abroad. I think people forget too that under the Clinton administration, uh, w with his sort of intervening in Northern Ireland and and. A lot of the other things he did around the world, his foreign policy, that he was actually quite well liked uh, in the, among the nations in the world for the most part um, because of his careful consideration of those conflicts that were outside of, you know, outside of our military purview or outside of our, but he, he engaged diplomatically with a lot of areas. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think, you know, the, uh, the United States at the end of the Clinton administration was, was seen as a, you know, kind of a, a constructive partner, you know, a le leader and partner. All right. Well, it's going to be a new, a new dawn, I guess, a new day, and uh, and what a great lecture to start us off uh, talking about Iraq. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's about peace, and uh, you know, Porg O'Malley is someone who has dedicated his whole life to trying to bring peace and reconciliation, and you know, we need to all get on that track. All right, Monday, yeah. November tenth, seven p.m. at the F. Bradford Morse Federal Building, and you can go to. Uh, W, uh, to uml.edu and, and look up Paul Marion and give him a give him a shout if you're going to go. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thanks, coming Lynn. in. Yep. 91.5 FM WUML Lowell. You, you must, must listen. listen.